What's up? My name is Travis Wild. This is my 2016 Ram Promaster, and I've been living on the road in different rigs since 2016. This video is sponsored by Jackery. To get your very own solar generator, click the link in the description and get 10% off when you use code FLORP at checkout. The Jackery Solar Generator 2000 Pro has 2,160 watt hours of capacity and can be fully recharged with six Solar Saga 200 watt solar panels in only two and a half hours. The solar generator is portable. It only weighs 19 kilograms, which for how much power it provides you is exceptionally lightweight. And with its folding handle, you can carry it anywhere. Its press and play design makes the Jackery Solar Generator easy and intuitive to use. You can charge it with solar panels, with a wall outlet, or in a vehicle. So click the link in the description and get your very own solar generator today and get 10% off when you use code FLORB at checkout. Now enjoy today's video. And remember to subscribe. Before I lived in my van, uh, I hadn't really traveled a whole ton. I'm from Michigan. I moved to Colorado, worked in some group homes, moved back to Michigan and was coaching. So basically I had a lot of different jobs and then I got cancer and was in hospitals a lot. So I wanted a way so I could be at the hospital more but still feel like I was at home. And at the same time wanted to build my career in the direction I already wanted it to go, which meant traveling, working in the outdoor industry, and doing photography. I was gonna live in a teardrop trailer, but I was talking to a friend of mine, and her and her husband, I thought they were like these well put together people, he's a lawyer, she's a city planner. The wife, Jamie, was like, no, you don't wanna live in a trailer, you wanna live in a van, you can be more stealth that way. And it was really cool, because it was a different reaction than I thought. So then I googled best van to build tiny home in and ended up on the 2002-2006 Sprinters, which that was my first van. My first van build was really done like on the fly, like a lot of people in their first ones. I started building and then I had to redo it a few months later because I saw it could be lighter, could be way more efficient. And it got to the point where I wanted to build another one. There was a couple that really wanted mine, so I sold it to them. That first build took me about four months. It was super bare bones. So I can build a van out now in two to four months. I put anywhere from fifteen to twenty-four thousand uh, dollars worth of materials, components on the vans. But end of the day, the point is to get these experiences, and it's approachable at every budget. It just depends on realistically living within your means and uh, having the goals. And when you're ready to upgrade, you can do that. All right, this is my Ram Promaster 2500. I built out sprinters and transits already, so I wanted to try the width of a Promaster and live in that. I also liked it because it was red. Uh, I have a dealer that I like to buy from, and he hit me up because he had a red one, and I was stoked on it. I had to install windows on the sides and back. I got the lights out here just because I like having the ability to light the van 360 when we're camping in the desert. All my vans I've wanted mainly, uh, to be gear haulers, so they've all been built like this. It meant to store everything I wanted to. It's pretty empty right now, just transitioning from winter to spring. Uh, snowboarding to biking, I had a lot of stuff emptied out. But yeah, it's all modular and stuff, so I can actually bring everything out if I ever wanted to replace it. Held in by, I think, 16 screws, so I could take that out. And then it's got underneath, um, I've got another uh, bar that I can put in that just supports it uh, from underneath the bed. It probably doesn't even need that, but I still like to have it. But you can have a completely empty space here and could even sleep another person down there if you really wanted to. I've got this big area that's on 500 pound sliders, so it's kind of nice for all the storage and accessibility and keeping things organized but also when it's a nice day out, you can hang out and sit up here. Fully supports people or a dog. Um, but yeah, it's kind of nice to have a place to hang out here. Hey, like you come down, down. Good girl. Uh, you can modify the doors to hang extra gear on, which is also nice. So this bookshelf uh, area in the back, before I had it here, Ayla was laying right on the edge and she like slipped down and would have just fallen into this cavern here. So that's where I was like, oh, I was already playing on it, might as well throw it in. But it's been really nice just to have a little bit of extra storage. Uh, made it so I don't have to be so picky with the books that I'm gonna bring in the van either, which has been nice. I carry a 30 gallon water tank in here. Um, and having a water fill on the outside is just way more convenient. The only downside is 
you really got to make sure if you're in Oregon or I think New Jersey, uh, the gas station attendant doesn't get confused. If I ever let friends use it, I would probably put a sticker here that says water only. Uh, a ladder, roof rack on top. Yeah, so I like bringing Ayla up there. People always ask how she gets up, so I'll show you. The rack is just a standard industrial roof rack that a lot of workers would put on their rigs. It's got the ladder roller in back that's actually great if you want to load kayaks up here or anything. But it's an aluminum roof rack and then I just used exterior screws. The biggest thing with doing your roof rack is remembering that basically you're going to be going through a hurricane and a tornado every day. Uh, so for the wood finish is a four season uh, log cabin finish that I put on and it's held up the best out of any finish I've done, but still probably need to redo it every year and a half or so. Uh, for solar, we've just got two 100 watt panels feeding into 300 amp hours of lithium batteries. Also have that connected to a DC to DC charger from the alternator, so it keeps my batteries usually 80% charged or more. Uh, but yeah, it's been more than enough for me. That's everything on the outside, so let's go take a look on the inside. All of my vans have had a divider from the front to the back rather than the swivel seats. Just because me personally, I wanted more of a cabin feel than being in a vehicle, so I try to hide every aspect that you can kind of feel that you're in a car. I did a whole wall here rather than a door. All the vans I've lived in, in the past have had a door that opens up, but this one has three seats in the front, so the door would just open up to a wall of seats. So I still have this area. If it's raining or I need to jump through, I can still do that. But for the most part, I just keep this cloth cover down um, and it gives me privacy. Uh, it's really nice as a form of insulation, just having the wall there. So that's why I've chosen to do it. And it was really cool too, because I was able to use all of this for storage space, kind of like a little pantry space and it looks really good too. So I've loved that. All my vans have had pretty unique live edge. It's just something that gives it a really cool look. Again, with having this whole wall here, I was actually able to do a wrap around live edge uh, into the sink counter area here. Uh, underneath is where the dog food goes. All of the water pump and the plumbing that goes back to the water tanks is in there as well. There's a way to divert it to a gray water tank or just to let it run out depending on the area you're in uh, and the capabilities for that. So it's nice to have both, but originally I had gray water tanks that uh, didn't go out at all. And I realized for the most part, I was storing like 10 to 15 gallons of toothpaste water that got really gross. So the less I have to do that, the better. Over here, these are all the drawers that are just like food. Uh, pantry top drawer is the toiletry like contacts and glasses and all that stuff down here this one was meant to fit backpacks that's where I keep all my camera gear we've got three cabinets up top for food and extra clothes uh, I kind of have more storage than I need which was intentional because I wanted a space that was specific for everything and didn't need to be filled up so I could feel really at peace and organized about where all my stuff is, not that it's all just packed in somewhere. This is actually a mirror image of the counter, so you can see this knot here is actually the other like quarter of this live edge uh, that I just milled down and planed down and then put and used for the cabinet covers up top. So the propane tank is sealed and mounted and vented right underneath this cabinet here. Uh, it's got two lines, one goes to the stove, the other goes to this Wave 6 heater. And last year in Colorado, it got down to negative 20 to 25 for a few nights in a row. This made it so I was still just sleeping in t-shirts and shorts in bed. The reason why I haven't gone with diesel is because they're finicky and they break a lot and all my friends were just like, oh, you need to get a diesel heater, Travis and then all their diesel heaters broke within the first month of uh, being in the mountains and their pipes froze and their batteries like really struggled. So this is consistent. They've been in vans and rigs for like 60, 70 years and they're super solid. So that's why I choose propane. Underneath the stove, we've just got a little spice drawer here. 
uh, and then we've got our trash down here. This is where the propane is sealed and vented is just in that little box down there. As far as the bed goes, we've got a big area here. Huge drawer for games, camera equipment, uh, writing stuff. And then underneath is the slide out table, which I love. And then under here is a little laptop drawer as well. So really utilizing the space. If you know me, I don't like talking about this stuff, but this is a nature's head composting toilet. Uh, if you have any more questions on it, you can go on Google and get them answered and plenty of van lifers love talking about it. Under here is my dirty laundry and shoes. Here's the fridge over here, just a Dometic CFX 35. Uh, I've done them before on sliders um, and kind of just timed it out. It's way quicker to do it this way. So uh, makes it easier for me when I just want to get into the fridge quick that I don't have to slide the whole thing out into the floor space. Something I love about my vans is they have these drop down storage so you can create extra counter space. Got one over here as well. Uh, just makes it a little nicer when you're cooking or uh, moving things around, have some extra storage space. And on the outside here, we've got the battery monitor, all the outlets, and then this is how you access uh, the inverter if needed. I've got my remote from a uh, vent fan there as well. That's where the 30 gallon water tank is as well, and the batteries and everything, so still wanna be able to access those. As far as a bed goes, it's been really nice having the ProMaster fit in a full mattress in here. You can do it side to side and sleep that way. Um, super comfortable bed. And up here is a staple in all my vans. Uh, this is actually the smallest bookshelf that I've included in any van. Whenever I build a van, I put them all through what I call the Dwight Schrute test. I'm not sure if you remember that episode of The Office where they go to the Christmas party, I think, and Dwight is like banging on the banister and pulling on everything. Uh, but all my uh, cabinetry and everything, my Dwight Schrute test is that I'm able to do pull-ups off of it. And if I can, it's solid, it's past the test. So I'm never worried about having cabinets or weight on the ceiling at all. For people that wanna get started, especially now, I would say talk to friends who are doing it, um, try to go on a trip beforehand, even if you can rent some other vans to see what you do and don't like. I think a misconception I had about van life was that uh, my stress levels were gonna go down in every way. Um, and they've gone down in a lot of ways, but the stress of constantly moving and not having that place that's secure and home, like it's not necessarily a simpler life in every way, but it's simpler in a lot of important ways. I think the biggest mantra, the biggest thing is like, this isn't gonna be a problem in a month. Uh, Cause that can be, a hard part about van life is like it when it rains it can pour and it can get really hard certain times but like a lot of times when I'm like oh man this is so much I just remember like this isn't going to be a problem in a week it's going to be an even smaller problem in a month and it's probably going to be nothing in a year so that kind of uh, is a better way to reframe your problems that you're having in the moment. I did not think I would be doing this for six years and there's a lot of people who don't do it for that long and a lot of people who complain about new people coming in but honestly I don't know if I would still be on the road if it was just about vans and just about builds but it's been how it's changed new people new takes new reasons coming into it that's really kept me interested and kept me uh, on the road and kept me motivated to build more vans for people and also just keep experiencing it for myself.